A video I posted during the winter of 2022 is making its rounds, and I think it's only fair to update you based on the information that I put into that video, what is going on with the orchids, that feature in that video, where I also explained my strategy for getting an orchid transitioned, which you see in front of you, in the summer, specifically June, July 2023. And well, it is now September 2023. Seeing as that video is making its rounds, this is an update where I'm going to show you the results of the transition plus the repositioning of the orchid. And I'm going to draw one conclusion, which is extremely valid. And that will make the point of what I was talking about in the first video. That video is going to be linked in my description if you have not seen it yet. So this is an important update coming right up. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I have some good news and some not so good news to report, but the good news is that the first video is valid. And with this update, I'm going to prove it. After you've watched this video, if you want to double check what I said in the first video, I encourage you to do that and then go ahead and watch that one back to back. Then you'll see what I'm really getting at. So this is Sopressa. She is my rescue orchid that came into my collection in the August of 2022. Her history is also documented, so I won't elaborate on that. She was transitioned in June of 2023. We're still in 2023, but I keep saying that for a reason. First of all, I mentioned that in the first video. And secondly, I mentioned why specifically either June or July of the next season I mentioned that. And the main factor for successful anything is temperature based on your orchid's requirements. So June and July, my nights are nice and balmy. The evaporative cooling of Lekka doesn't take effect. And in my scenario, that is important because I do not use heat mats. I do not heat my winter orchid holding space. None of that. So I rely purely on my climate for any kind of repotting, despite that sometimes new roots grow during a time of year where I really should be repotting, but I can't because what happens afterwards is going to be more stressful to the orchid if I repotted her during active root growth because I don't have the temperatures than to just leave her alone and then hope for the best when the warmer temperatures come and deal with the root system very gently. No matter the media, this applies if you do not have a controlled grow space. But again, that is all covered in the first video. So this is Suppressa and hello, two months later, here we are. She is doing great. She recently had her first little rain influence, her first encounter with rain, let's just say. And look at her roots growing gorgeously outside of the pot as per. Anyway, that's fine. There's plenty of roots in the pot and you can see the progress if you can't see your roots like I can't, but you see her progress because her first leaf is growing beautifully and she's now already working on her second leaf. So that was a successful prediction. She was not in active root growth when I transitioned her because I was relying on the temperature to do the work for me. If I wanted to, I could have waited until I saw active root growth, but I only have a very small window of opportunity to repot my Phalaenopsis orchids and, well, take it from there. The climate will do the rest. Trust and believe if your orchid is growing aerial roots, that something else is growing in the pot as well. The roots won't just be growing up on the outside without some activity in the pot. But again, if your structures are looking normal, if they're growing as they should, if there are no kinks and issues, everything is fine in the pot. I consider this a success. And this is my update on the transition of Sopresa, which happened on a live stream. So of course, it's a little bit difficult where I'm at to do a live stream and not many people were around to see it, but here you are, success. It is done if you weren't aware of the fact that there was a transition that happened in June. But I'm not done yet. There was another orchid featured in that first video. And this one is going to surprise you, but it proved something very major and that is important in the orchid hobby. This is the orchid that featured as a clip at the end of that video was growing gorgeous roots. And I said, because she is established in Lekka and self-watering and has been for several seasons performing really well, it doesn't matter to interfere 
because I wanted to stake her, reposition her, get all those fantastic roots into the pot, I said it doesn't matter to interfere if you have an established orchid, no matter the temperature. That is where I was wrong, and it is clear as day that her status quo has changed radically. She did not appreciate the interference despite active root growth while the temperatures were low. So I am never going to repeat that again, and I hope that this update will also help you to understand that what I said back then, unless you are in a controlled environment, let me put that out there, then go ahead, you're fine, keep your temperatures nice and balmy for your orchids that have been repotted or transitioned, but if you're like me, dependent on climatic influences, do not touch. Unfortunately, roots will grow aerial and you may only get a few into the pot and not all the ones that you want in the pot, like what I was trying to do, she lost all her roots. So, while that is upsetting, it is not when you have a channel and you put out information like I do, don't do this, do this, don't do this. It is not upsetting to me at all. It just helps me to bring to you the best information that I can based on experience. And again, temperature is the key for any repot. When I staked this orchid, she had none of that to back her up. And then, hello, of course, we get this. But you know what? <laughs> She's already cooking with gas, new roots are on the way. And this is the setup that was recommended to me by Trisha's Orchid Life in a live stream, a separate one, where we were dealing with struggling Phalaenopsis orchids. So when I saw the droopy leaves, classic sign, oh, there's issues in the pot. And I thought, why you? You were staked, you had great roots. Why are you looking like this? So I took her out of the pot and I thought, hello, and that was a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, right, I've got to get on with an update here. But what I wanted to do was, first of all, wait to show you that there is already active root growth. Here we are. And she's already growing a second leaf. Now, this structure is going to remain small. Doesn't matter as long as she grows new roots. And I will have her in this setup probably until June, July of 2024. So you can see we are sequencing this first ever video that I did about when and when not to repot based on your conditions. <laughs> and we'll probably be back in 2024, around about June, to put her back into LECA and self-watering. In the meantime, of course, I'm working with organic media. And once the roots are in the pot, I shall be working with her according to organic media. That means pHing, etc. And I don't mind how old that media is. For me, it is fresh out of the bag, but it has been in the bag for five years. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, there's another video that is also super useful. How long is too long? how to pH so that the orchid will get nutrients even if the media has broken down while you wait for the right temperature to repot your orchid. Now, I hope that this video does undermine the importance of the right temperature, no matter the media that you are working with. If I had left this Phalaenopsis entirely alone, just accepted wherever the roots were going to grow, we would not be having this situation at this point in time. So I'm going to take away what I said. If your root system is established and your orchid has been established in a setup for many, many years, temperature doesn't matter. I'm going to take that away and say it is wrong. Temperature is of utmost importance no matter what you do with your orchids when it comes to repotting, not just changing the media like I did from organic to inorganic, usually qualified as a transition, but any repot, in my opinion, if the media is broken down, you're moving it into fresh media, it is also a transition because the climate of the pot changes from broken down to fresh, from more water retentive to less water retentive, so it doesn't matter. What matters is your temperature. Let me know if you have any questions and would you do me a favor, please, two actually, would you give this video a like so it can get into the algorithm as well because there is a correction in this video as an update to the first video that seems to be making its rounds. I don't want people to get the wrong information. That would help everybody out a lot, including my channel. And something else that would help my channel out is if you were to subscribe because yes, when a realization hits that I stated something as a definitive and it turns out that there's a little bit of a tweak, even a fraction of something I need to correct, and that is what I do on this channel. So know that you're in safe hands when you subscribe to my channel. I call out my own mistakes. 
I correct them. However, we need to tie the two videos together and I can only do that with your help. If you have shared the first video in the first time around, I ask you to also share this video because again, a correction was needed here. So having said all that, I want to say thank you so, so much for your support. Thank you very much for watching. And then there's just one more thing. Make sure you have yourself a beautiful day. However, I do attach a condition to that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.